but um, one of them is also The King of Staten Island. I thought it was a really good film. I actually, I know Judd Apatow gets, um, he gets kind of criticized for his movies being long, because they're obviously uh, kind of, com- uh, what, how do you say, dramedies. But um, I loved that this one was a little bit longer. You get to kind of immerse yourself along with the characters and I, and I felt like it was justified at least in this case and uh, very good very good film Pete Davidson's always fun to uh, watch yeah. you know he has this kind of brute force about himself and like um, just the way he carries himself and stuff it's it's very um, very interesting and, and dynamic to be honest uh, so that's the King of Satin Island available on VOD right now. And then my next one, my next and last one is, uh, I believe it's on Hulu right now. It's called Gemini. It's from 20, uh, 2017 and it stars Zoe Kravitz and Lola Kirk along with, uh, John Cho. It's a, um, kind of neo noir, neo noir, um, mystery, uh, murder mystery and, I can't say much without giving giving it away. So check that out if you have Hulu. I'm sure most of you guys have Hulu. Check it out. Very incredible looking little indie film that uh, probably a lot of people haven't seen yet. So check it out. It's called Gemini. I, I think I remember. I think I remember seeing the trailer somewhere. So uh, I think I'm gonna check that one out. Yeah, I think uh, well, you probably saw it on the uh, digital. Jim had it for a bit for a couple weeks. That might have been okay. Small, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and with that being said, we all will dive into our main focus. Five, four, three, two, one. And now for the movie focus of the week. All right. Cool. All right, our main focus, which is actually the long-awaited episode of uh, real episode for Diego Luna, he picked the Disaster Artist, which is rated R. It's a, it's a comedy. Uh, one it runs one hour and forty four minutes, and it's got a incredible ninety one on Rotten. Yeah. Uh, directed by James Franco and starring James and Dave Franco, who are brothers for. Anybody that doesn't know, Seth Rogen, Jackie Weaver, and Allison Brie. The synopsis goes like this. In the late 90s, aspiring actors Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero moved to Los Angeles in hopes of making it big in the industry. After being rejected time and time again, they decided to take action into their own hands by creating their own project, which would become the infamous film The Room. Backed by both A24 and Warner Bros, and derived from the non-fiction book of the same name, Franco really strikes gold in both his dedication to the Tommy character and the overall tone of the film. Anybody who is into cult flicks has at least heard of The Room, which is still shown regularly at special midnight screenings. It really brings to light the struggles behind trying to make it in the industry and ultimately believing in yourself despite the odds. Although The Room is considered one of the worst films to ever be made, this cast and crew still manage to make history in their own misfit way. A celebration of the human spirit. Nice. Thanks. Beautifully put. <laughs> so, Diego, um, now that I've said my piece, what's yours? Why did you pick this film? I'm sorry it took us so long to get to it. Um, thank you for picking this. I actually really enjoy this film. I got to see it in the theater, and now I want to know uh, what made you um, want to make it a main focus. Uh, it's funny because I think I mentioned to you that. Um at the last concert we went to together, I was like, "Hey, would it be okay if, I, if we do the disaster artist one?" <laughs> when I, I think I went to the Landmark Cinema here in San Diego, mm-hmm. um, the one in uh, the one over by Normal Heights, and and so. I went going in blind because I've never heard what the fuck the room was. <laughs> All I heard is like, um, I was with, with the, the girl I was dating was like, oh, just weird. Like she brought them spoons. And I was like, what the fuck are, like, what the, like, I was just like taken back. I was like, they're going to take our spoons away, I guess, if we're going to take them in. And then she's like, no, oh, no, no, no. It's, it's 
like a fun it's a fun interactive movie like like you have to go like you, you you're gonna love it and i was like all right cool and as i was watching the movie saw this guy with like a bunch of belts on his fucking um on his waist and like and like looking like a hair metal band um like retired singer or whatever and then what the fuck is going on so as we're watching the movie i kind of see what like the interaction how hilarious this movie is so terrible that it's good like it's one of those movies where you're just like oh my god like yes and when i found out that james franco was gonna do uh a movie about about this movie um it was just incredible because i knew james i knew um I may not respect James as much as I as I as I do as an actor, but I think like he with this movie he just like won me over even more. I think because it's um, sometimes it's hard to take James Franco seriously because he has he does like a really good serious film and then he does like a really odd comedy and like he he doesn't follow like a really set of like he doesn't follow really set. Um, type of genre or, or type actor like he just has his own thing going on which throws me off a lot because I, I know there's a lot of people that just have one role that they play all the time but James Franco is like very diverse in that in that um in that thing but I remember watching The Disaster Artist and I was like oh man this movie is like <laughs> like on point like and it's true what they say in, in the beginning like you know there's no other movie there's no blockbuster movies there's no certain blockbuster movies that you play and you talk about, oh man like we're gonna go see it out at a midnight screening you know like this one maybe like citizen kane or or um or something along those lines you know but other than that like i don't see any any other movie that made a, tr- a great impact on in in people like this one has you know <laughs> it's really hard to achieve something like that <clears throat> to be honest without being forgotten you know what i mean i think that's the real success is somehow this movie um, stays relevant when and that's what um, somebody, one of the celebrities in the beginning says, people aren't talking about, like, whatever won Best Picture 10 years ago, but they're still talking about the room somehow, you know? And that's really yeah. weird. <laughs> but anyway, continue, Diego. It's, Sorry. I was like, no, it's just like, it's just funny. It's just baffling that, like, this movie's so terrible and people say, oh, it's like a really terrible movie. But yeah, but, like, you know, you're still getting in line at midnight to watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it, it kind of, it, it, it blurs the line of, you know, entertainment, you know, or what we go to see, you know what I mean? Yeah, we say it's bad, but still people pay to watch, and they've paid so many times to watch it that it's actually turned a profit, you know? It's rumored that they've spent $8 million on the room's, uh, you know, budget when they were when they were actually filming eight million dollars and they t- and they made that back and then some from this small you know illegitimate film i was like I, I legitimately saw like um like a line around the corner dude to watch the room like i was like whoa like seriously like this is like this is crazy like literally i've never seen the landmark this packed ever in my life like ever like I mean, like I've gone and seen like really good midnight screenings there. Saw Ninja, Ninja Turtles there. Uh, they live. Um, saw a bunch of different films, and this one it was just like so like the long. It was sold out, dude. Sold out, bro. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> James, you've been awfully quiet, man. And you, what are your thoughts uh, on the film? No, I mean, I thought I, you, I've, I, I've never. Um, Oh, I was just going to say, I thought you had, uh, not The Room, but I thought you had previously seen a Disaster Artist. I didn't know it was going to be a first time oh, yeah. watch for you. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen I've seen The Disaster Artist. Um, this is my second time seeing it, uh, but I've never seen The Room, so I don't, it, to me, it was, it was like I watched The Room, 
uh-huh. without having to watch it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just because it's kind of, you know, it, it, you're getting kind of like a behind the scenes, like the making of the room, basically. Um, and it's it's kind of intrigued me to to almost you know to want to go see it or just to to, to rent it or something um, here at home. Um, I, I remember when we went to go see the Warriors at the Can. Oh yeah, and um, I remember seeing the sign for the room. And I'm like, <laughs> who's this? I'm like, this guy looks so creepy. He looks like a like. It's funny because in the movie they say like, "Oh, what do you think I'm like a uh, Frankenstein?" And it's like, like yeah, he looks like fucking like Frankenstein <laughs> or like a like a, a, a weird ass Dracula. Um. So that's I mean it's hilarious that that, that they say that and then I automatically thought of that when I remember I, when I remember looking at the sign, the poster for it. But um, the movie the movie's actually I thought it was pretty funny. Um, it it, it still baffles me that like. To this day, I mean, I don't know. What they say in the movie, but um, to this day, they don't. They still don't know where he is or where, where he's from, yeah. or how old he actually really is, or where his money came from. So I, I think it's. Uh, I, I really like the part where Seth Rogen is going to go. Uh, he's going to go cash his check. I think it was, mm-hmm. and the teller's like, "Oh, um, you know Tommy?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's like. Uh, this bank account's like a black hole. It's never ending. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "What? Really?" He's like, "I'm just surprised. That, I, I'm just surprised the check is good." And he's like, "Yeah, man." He's like, "You guys are making a movie?" And I, I just thought that was hilarious because it's like he's so weird. He's so weird. His like weird and ass accent. Whole, <laughs> he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm from New Orleans." It's like where you know New Orleans, the Big Easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey baby face <laughs> yeah. it's like so just so weird and like he's like I'm the same age as you are and it's like you're 24 and he's like yeah I'm a, I'm a kid Dude, you look so old it's like uh, but it, none, none of my friends have fancy cars like that he's like oh, cause all your friend little kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> When he says that, dude, it kills me every time. <laughs> so you always uh, hang out with little kids. It's, 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 it's hilarious. And he's like, your mom's crazy. <laughs> and then he, but it's just so funny. Like, I mean, I, I, I would assume that, that uh, James Franco did tons of research and probably hung out with them. Um, you know, kind of got a feel for how he is and learned how he talked and everything like that. So, I think it's just it's crazy that that's how he was and and he was just a really weird like eccentric I guess eccentric kind of guy yeah that um it, it's cool like I understand like his his like feeling betrayed because like um uh Dave Franco uh what, what's his his name in the movie <clears throat> um shit Greg right Greg um yeah he he was like kind of the only guy who took him serious or, or like you know wanted his Tommy's advice for for acting mm-hmm. and he's like Yo, you you make joke on me and he's like no he's like okay and he's like you want to go eat or you know it's just he's just so weird like random like off the top of his head like it's just so weird but I, I understand like I can see like how he felt betrayed and now like he was kind of like his only friend that kind of believed in him or kind of you know gave him time of day to to talk to him so I that relationship as friends I thought that's really cool and it's cool to know that they're still like best friends now and they still talk on a regular basis yeah I gotta say uh, before I forget how good how hilarious is Zac Efron in this <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you motherfucker! You motherfucker! Cocksucker, motherfucker! <laughs> when, I was, when I watched this movie, I'm like, is that Zach Efron? <laughs> and he's, like, he's in it for like five minutes, but it's so hilarious. He's oh, getting all so hyped good. for his role. <laughs> Where's my motherfucking money? <laughs> he's like, oh god, this I guy like, like monster. <laughs> 
man. Oh my god, it's so weird. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm saying.